Hello, my name is Jenny Parsons. I'm one of the five celebrities taking part in Gray County Reads. So, uh, my background is as a performer with uh, The Second City, which is based on improvisation as an art form where you make up stuff, you make up stories. And I actually did a lot of touring with The uh, Second City. We toured all through Canada up into Inuvik, over to uh, not too, not very far east, over to New Brunswick, I guess. I think maybe that's as far as we got, maybe Halifax. And then uh, when I graduated into the corporate division, uh, we went to Hong Kong and Turkey, Istanbul. It was amazing. We we did uh, <laughs> we did some comedy as part of Great County Reads the celebrity list. I suppose my celebrity. Uh, days were on the show Winging It, which is on the Family Channel, and it's still in reruns. So I think if you're a teenager, sort of, when you did some babysitting five or six years ago, then you would recognize me as Mrs. Lennox, the drama teacher. And now, here in Gray County, I've been here for 10 years. I teach improvisation still, uh, wherever people would like me to come. So if that's you, I'll come and teach improv. And uh, I also paint. I'm a painter now. My husband and I opened a studio called Just Arts uh, because my first two initials are J-E and his are S-T. You can guess his name. So that's J-E-S-T, Just Arts, but also because our background is in jesting, making uh, jokes and being foolish. And, um, but also because uh, I think just sort of being generally playful is our approach to the world. Even as a painter, my paintings are very playful and uh, sort of hidden puns and amusements are inside of them. And um, I, think, I think that is my uh, general offering to the world is, is um, jesting. The book I'm defending for Gray County Reads is by Emily St. John Mandel, and it's a science fiction called Station Eleven. And it's set in two time periods, in the present, sort of a, a modern day setting, there is a, an actor on stage, there's a, a number of characters that we meet in the present, and then there's 10 years in the future. And the difference between the two worlds is that there's a virus that comes and kills 95% of the world within 24 hours. So in the present day, there is all the things you would imagine when a virus hits the news, all the things the characters might be doing to try to organize themselves for a new future. And then you cut to 10 years in the future where there is sort of a starting over and it's, um, I would call it a positive book. I would call it um, non-gory, but I can talk more about that later, about what the book is as opposed to, you know, the flavor of the book, which is generally positive and non-gory. Um, the story is about the things we take for granted, I think. I think it, all the things that we get used to seeing and having like little computers in our hands and even heat and um, fresh orange juice if you live in Ontario will, will become one of those things you don't see too much if, if, uh, if in fact that this kind of thing ever happened. So it's about taking the things that we uh, take for granted for you know, getting a new appreciation for them. It's one of the things the book is about. It's also about survival. There's a traveling um, performance company who, I, even, though, even though it's the end of the world, there's still performances making people making people each other, ha each other happy, which appeals to me, of course. And this traveling company's motto is, survival is not enough, which is a Star Trek quote. And it means basically, yes, we have to think about our food and our shelter very much, but then after that, I think human beings sort of need more than that, just that. That they do need art and music and each other, and I would argue even books, that they also need books. And there is a library set up in a fictional city called Severn City, it's at an old airport where people do come to, and offer their uh, books to this museum of civilization. And that, I think, speaks to the idea that we need more than just food and shelter, that we do need to think about our history and even the objects around us as cultural, cultural things and how they speak to us about our stories. Station 11, written by Emily St. John Mandel, 
is uh, the book to start with for this Gray County Reads because it's very accessible. It's a fast read. It's a page turner. It, it jumps around in different time zones, different parts of the world, inside different characters. So there's always this place to move to. It's really hard to be bored reading this book. 